Number nine, following vigorous exercise, the body temperature of an 80 kilogram person is 40 degrees Celsius. At what rate in watts must the person transfer thermal energy to reduce the body temperature to 37 degrees Celsius in 30 minutes? Assuming the body continues to produce energy at a rate of 150 watts. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this person who's vigorously exercising and his or her biceps are bulging at the moment. Um, this person has a mass of 80 kilograms. The initial temperature then of the body is going to be 40 degrees Celsius because they were exercising. All right. And over time, we want the temperature to go from 40 degrees Celsius down to 37 degrees Celsius. And we need that change to occur, this particular change to occur over a certain time interval. And they suggest that we, uh, that this has to be performed in 30 minutes. Okay, so 30 minutes. Further complicating the matter, okay, this would be fairly straightforward if we didn't have this additional part of continuing to produce energy at a rate of 150 watts. This would be actually relatively straightforward. Why? Well, you know the mass of the person and you have the change in temperature of the person, okay? That means then, and by the way, the specific heat we'd have to look up of a person, of a human, all right, that's right from your table from the book. Knowing those variables, we could have calculated then heat, the heat transferred, right? Because you know the mass, you know the specific heat, and you know the change in temperature. Once you then know the heat that is in joules, right? You know the heat transferred, that's in joules, okay? So basically then, you would have realized that power is equal to energy or joule per second. So you just found the joules from Q, you would have plugged in that value there, and then you would have taken your minutes here, converted it into seconds, plugged it in there, and then you would have found the power, which is watts, remember, okay? Power is watts. That's how you could have done it, not bad. The problem here, and it's not even that hard anyway, but there's a, you know, the problem here is that the person is continuing to produce uh, energy at a rate of 150 watts. What that basically means is that the cellular processes, all right, that are going on inside the body are producing an energy a value of about 150 joules every second. That's what a watt is, right? Power is equal to energy over time. And it's a watt is then equal to joule per second, okay? Because energy is in joules, time is in seconds. So basically now what's happening is that due to the cellular processes, the energy rate production is about 150 watts, okay? Now, if, if we were not able to cool the body at all, this energy would continually accumulate inside the body. And it would continually get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. But we know that that doesn't happen. So actually, in order to just maintain a temperature, in order to maintain an internal temperature, if this is the rate of production of energy, and that's the rate at which energy is entering the body, we need to then match that rate of energy leaving the body just to maintain a temperature just to maintain the temperature, not to drop it, not to low, not to raise it, nothing, just to maintain the temperature. We would have to be uh, transferring thermal energy at this rate just to maintain the temperature. All right, keep that in mind. So that means every second here, every second, just to maintain the temperature, we would have to transfer 150 joules of energy, excuse me, 150 joules of energy every second. Okay, now let's keep that in mind and then do the process that I was describing before. Let's now just calculate the amount of uh, energy necessary to lower the temperature from 40 to 37, and then we have to combine these ideas together. Okay, so just remember, this is the rate just to maintain the temperature. All right, so this is just maintenance. Maintenance, I, I, yeah, that, it's, it's chicken scratch. That's what that is. So here we have the um, uh, heat going to be lost by the body. And why is it lost? Well, because the temperature is going from 40 to 37. So you'll see the negative sign come out of this equation. All right? It's going to be the mass. Uh, so the Q 
loss by the human body is equal to the mass of the human body multiplied by the specific heat of the human body multiplied by the change in temperature. Now remember, I'm going to expand on that. It's going to be the final temperature of that human body minus the initial temperature of that human body. Okay. Now let's plug in the values. So here we have the heat lost will be equal to the mass. And they said this person was 80 kilograms. So we like kilograms. This is the specific heat. You got to look that up on the table, 3,500. Then the final uh, temperature is going to be 37 degrees Celsius. Remember, you can leave these in Celsius degrees. You can convert them into Kelvin, but why? It's, the difference is going to be the same, right? This number is not going to change. The final result will not change. So just keep it in terms of Celsius. And by, convert it to Kelvin and, and see. See if it's the same. So 80 times 3,500, then multiplied by now 37 minus 40. And here we get an answer now of negative uh, about 840,000, right? So 8.40 times 10 to the third. Good. What am I talking about? Times 10 to the fifth. What? I don't know why I said third. Times 10 to the fifth. And this is now the amount of heat energy, okay, that needs to be uh, lost in total. Okay, this is the amount of heat energy that needs to be lost. Needs to be lost. And now this amount of heat energy that needs to be lost, they're, they're telling us, they're allowing us more or less, to have this change occur over 30 minutes, okay? But the other thing is that not only do we have to lose this amount of heat, right, because we're lowering the temperature, but we also are gonna have to remember, lose this amount of heat energy per second. So how much in just in just terms of maintenance, just in maintaining your body temperature, how much heat, so I'm going to go back to this now, how much heat, how much heat energy is going to need to be lost over 30 minutes if you are, if you need to lose 150 joules every second? We can do that conversion, right? We basically would take the 150 joules needing to be lost every second. And what I want to do is I want to convert this into basically a value uh, over 30 minutes. I want to find the total number of joules over 30 minutes. So first we convert from seconds into minutes. I get rid of the seconds, 60 seconds in one minute, goodbye seconds. Now this would be joule per minute, right? So that's good. Now if I were to stop the analysis here, it would tell me how many joules there are per minute. Well, that's good, but there's 30 minutes, so I can just take it and multiply it by 30, right? And look, 30 minutes, if I put the minutes on the top there, notice the minutes will cancel, leaving me with just joules. And this now definitively proves that this will be the answer, all right, over 30 minutes. So it's going to be 150 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 30. And that's going to be now uh, 2.7, 2.7 times 10 raised to the uh, fifth joules. Now, this is the amount of energy that has to be lost. Okay, now if I'm consistent with the science here, which I should be, we're adding heat to the body through metabolical, uh, meta, metabolical, <laughs> metabolic processes at a rate of 150 joules per second, aka 150 joules, uh, excuse me, 150 watts. That means that we have to lose it, right, at that rate. So that's negative. Okay, that means that's negative. That means this is negative. And that means this is negative. Now we can kind of see the consistency here. So this is the total amount of joules we have to lose over 30 minutes just to maintain the temperature. And then we have to lose this number of joules over 30 minutes to lower the temperature. So what do you think now? In order to now find the total power, what would I need to do? I would basically now need, I, would, I could write an equation like this, that the total power, right? And here's the consistency idea again, total power, would be equal to the total energy, total, total energy over the total time, right? Total, total, total helps focus, right? And we're asked to find then the power, the rate in watts. Remember, watts is power. So I need to know then the total energy and the total time. And that's what I just found, the total energy. How do I find that? It's this plus this, right? Okay, does that kind of make sense? I like breaking it up like that because I think it helps make it a little clearer. A little more clear? I don't really know the English, but I can barely speak one language. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know how people speak more than one. I think it's great, but 
give a give a lot of credit. If you think physics is hard, imagine learning a different language. Um, all right, so uh, so we have then the total power here is going to be equal to the total energy. So basically, now I I'm just going to what am I going to do here? I'm going to must person transfer. I'm just going to use the positive. I'm going to use just the positive magnitude of the number. Okay, I'm not going to plug in the negative signs. It honestly doesn't matter. Um, by me saying we're going to lose this amount, I'm basically telling you it's negative. By me leaving in the negative signs, it would mean a, uh, that that is being lost. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so there's going to be 8.4 times 10 to the fifth plus then the additional 2.7 times 10 to the fifth, all then divided by the total time. And remember, this time in terms of power has to be in seconds. So basically, we'd have to convert 30 minutes into seconds, right? So you know that there's 60 seconds in one minute. And if there's 30 minutes, just take 60, multiply it by 30. And what do we get? We get about 1800, right? And I'm just going to double check because my mind is uh, my mind is like throbbing at this particular point. Uh, so I'm just going to check with the calculator. And that is the value. All right. So now all we have to do is add them up and do the division, okay? So 84,000, uh, excuse me, 840,000 basically, plus then 270,000, all then divided by now 1,800. And here we go, 616.66666, right? So this is about 617 now, 617 watts. AKA 617 joules per second must be lost in order to not only drop the body temperature down, but also overcome the amount of energy that's being produced by cellular processes. All right. Oh man. Wow. This problem is, uh, yeah, right. No, I, I could totally see how someone could explain this in about two minutes. <laughs> I can explain it in two minutes, but nobody would understand it then. So uh, that's why the videos are long, because I really want you to understand it, all right? And hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, you do. And like I said here, again, you can just plug in the negative sign here if you want. These would have both been negative. The math doesn't really change. It doesn't matter. Guys, thanks for tuning in, all right? Please give us a hand, all right? Hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. And, uh, you know, we look forward to helping with more problems. Take care.